all the cats are in attendance too. Okay, you all, you can all hear me all right? Yes? Yeah? Okay. Okay. So welcome everybody and happy Wednesday. Um, my thought for you today, we are coming up on Navaratri, so it's not yet. It actually starts the night of the, of the 17th, so next week. Um, but it's a nine day celebration of the goddess. And whenever there's a celebration, right, there's a holiday that's coming up is what do we do is before you actually get to that point, you prepare, right? You actually create something, you go into, um, you know, the, the cleaning up and the organizing and the deciding that this is the way I'm going to celebrate this moment, or this is the way that I'm going to enter into this moment. And it occurred to me, right, that we often get to Navaratri and because it's nine days of celebration, you're like, you know, how much preparation do you need? You have nine days that you're already, you know, asked to um, pay attention to your life in a way that you wouldn't normally. So this is the prelude to that, the prelude to paying attention to your life the way that you wouldn't normally do, right? And that prelude, it occurred to me that this whole process is very similar to the way that we go into meditation, right? Is that there's so much of this awareness that we create, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention to all of these details of yourself that normally you wouldn't. And all of that is in effort to open up to that celebration of the internal space, the internal world. So my question for you is, is that in your awareness, as you're building your awareness of yourself, whether it's meditation or it's a celebration is, are you conscious of that moment where you let go of the effort? Are you conscious of the moment where you shift from me trying to make something feel a certain way or act a certain way and letting myself actually receive or actually feel the thing that I'm celebrating, right? Because that's the moment that's really important or that's the awareness that is the most important is not everything that I can do to prepare. Am I preparing correctly? But can I bring my awareness? Can I elevate my awareness, concentrate my awareness so that when I get to that point where I've done everything that I can do to prepare, I can just let go and receive something right? Because that's the celebration. That's the important thing is our ability to receive, not our skill in how we prepare, right? So that's what we're working with. And so that's in your poses as well is are you working with your body in a way that you are opening it so that you are able to receive the benefits, right? And if that's not the case, then that's what we're looking for is to build your awareness in that direction. The moment when you let go of your effort, right? So I want that in every posture that there's effort, 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 prepare, prepare, prepare. And then there's the moment where you actually just breathe the posture and you receive something, right? You let go. So comfortable seat if you're not there already. And the eyes close. Our asana practice, our physical practice is essentially the internal cleaning, internal reorganization. That's what it's for. And it is that organization so that we are able to easily receive what our life is already giving us. Instead of filtering it through a lot of distraction or a lot of stress or a lot of confusion, we're able to just receive it. And so even things that maybe didn't look like a gift before start to feel like, oh, there's a benefit to that. So breathe very deeply, please. And as you exhale, really let go of this morning. And again, as you exhale, let go of this afternoon. And as you exhale again, let go of this evening that's happening after this time on your mat, let it go. And every exhale is a let go of something let go of tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. And exhale and let go of yesterday. And let go of the day before that. And the day before that. And the day before that. We always start with the emptying with spiritual practice that is your greatest preparation is the emptying. Now one more deep breath in, lengthen through your spine, feel your ribs expand, navel in so your low back feels upright, strong. 
And then exhale, stay just as lifted, but let your frame just hang. And then hands come together in front of the heart, palm to palm, rub your hands. Rub, 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 fast, fast, fast. Faster, faster, Sue. Good. And then press your palms together. Please really pressing fingertips, heels of the hands, then draw those elbows wide, lift your chest up into your thumbs. Good. So you're squeezing that heat between your hands and letting it flow all the way through the arms. And then we're gonna open with the sound of Om, deep breath in. Let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release the hands, please. And take your hands to your knees or your thighs to so stay seated and just start to circle your torso, make nice big spirals. Again, keeping the pelvis nice and heavy so you're not letting your pelvis roll around on the floor. You're just moving the torso. Good. And then let your spine go the other way. So twist yourself or turn yourself in the other direction. Good. It's also, of course, in the yogic stories, it's one of the stories of the birth of Lakshmi or the realization of Lakshmi, where it said that the yogis, or not the yogis, but the saints, not even the saints, where am I going? The heavenly beings and the demons, so the gods and the demons all have to come together and they have to churn the ocean of consciousness. And from that ocean, the first thing that rises up is guess what? All the yuck, <laughs> all the poison all the yuckiness, come back to stillness, start to cat cow your spine. So that concept of emptying that before you can receive something that is of the greatest benefit, because that's the Lakshmi energy of what is valuable in your life, what's uplifting in your life, what's beneficial in your life. So before you can receive that, what do you have to do? You have to move through or beyond the attachment to what's yucky. attachment to the things that are from yesterday or that are connected to a tomorrow that hasn't happened. Good, come back to stillness please, dropping the right ear towards your right shoulder. Bring your right hand up just to the outside of your head so you're adding a little weight there. Stretch your left arm out to the left so your left fingertips find the floor. And then really reach out, so press your left fingertips into the floor and then press your head up into your right hand and really stretch so you're reaching through the left arm and reaching the left side of your neck and shoulder away from each other. Good, and then come back up to center, please. Switch that to the other side, dropping the left ear towards the left shoulder. Left hand comes up just to hold the uh, outside of your head. Stretch the right fingertips wide, fingertips find the floor. Good, and then pressing into your fingertips that you're getting long through that top ridge of your shoulder. Good, press your head gently up into your hand. So again, there's a strength to your neck, a length to your shoulder, to your arm. Nice. And then release that, please. Dropping the chin forward towards your chest. Roll the neck from side to side just a little bit. Dropping the chin forward with every breath. Moving through center. Good. And then come back to stillness. Nice, you guys. Roll forward onto hands and knees. Good. Stretch your right arm out wide to the right. Slide that arm behind your left wrist, right shoulder finds the floor, thread the needle, walk your left arm forward towards straight. Good, press into the right forearm, good. Open the ribs, press into your shins, navel to spine. Beautiful. There's always this sense that we have to look for where we have caught ourselves before we can recognize what being free is, before we can receive that. Otherwise, it's just a great concept in our head, but we have no idea what we're even asking for. Come back up to center, hands and knees. Go the other way. Take your left arm out wide to the left. Slide behind your right wrist. Left shoulder finds the floor. 
walk the right arm forward towards straight. Same thing, keep pressing into your shins, keep that equal weight on your base, navel to spine. And this is sort of our yogic teachings as well. It says that everything that we say that we're asking for in those big abstract concepts, we have no idea what it means. That's the thing. So when it happens in an imperfect way in our life, it's like we don't even notice it because we think that it can only be this thing that is so far beyond our usual experience. So yeah, there is the moment where that can happen, where you are suddenly experiencing something way beyond whatever you normally feel. But we're also asked to do is to step into that bigness, the perfectness of that, and then to be able to step out of it again and recognize how threads of that is running through your life all the time. It's also Lakshmi energy. Walk yourself back up to hands and knees. Good, spread your fingers wide, please. Tuck your toes, come into downward facing dog. Good, and then bend your knees nice and deeply, please. Yeah, knees bend and then start to cat cow your upper spine again. Keep your knees bent, so keep your hips dropping low. Move your spine. Be aware of if you are pulling your head beyond the length of the extension of your shoulders. So if your shoulders are hunching and you're pulling your neck between that, instead really work that energy of lifting your chest up and keep your head neutral. Good. I feel like I'm big on this all the time, but especially lately I've been very big on don't create more pain for yourself. Good. So again, you wanna become conscious of your effort and where your effort is creating meaningful action and where it's not. Nice, you guys, come back to stillness with the spine, lift the hips nice and high, let your heels soften towards the floor. Good job. And then step the right leg forward between the hands. Good, inhale the arms up, high lunge, please. Beautiful, and then interlace your fingers at your low spine. So reach behind you, interlace your fingers. Good, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears, squeeze the upper arms towards each other and then start to stretch the arms towards straight. So you're pulling your hands towards your back heel, but pull your low rib cage in and get taller through the front of your belly. Nice, and then bow forward just halfway. So bring your torso parallel to the floor. Keep extending the arms back. As soon as you feel your head starting to drop below your shoulders, lift up through the back of your throat, drop your chin, lift up through your ears. Good, and keep extending, squeezing. Nice, and then stretch your arms out wide to letter T as you release this position. You're still hovering halfway to the floor, but arms out wide, straight out from the shoulders mark, wider. There you go. And then touch left hand down to the floor, please. Right arm to the sky, spinal twist. Good, so you're not dropping into that hand, but you're using it now as a way to lift your right shoulder higher. Awesome. And then release that hand down to the floor, please. Both hands inside the front knee, drop the back knee down, walk your hands to the upper left-hand corner of your mat, come on down to your forearms if you'd like, or stay on fingertips, but breathe into your hips. Good, so there's a little scoop here still of the low belly. So the front of your pelvic bones is lifting up and your tail is dropping. So we say it's like you're scooping that, that uh, right butt cheek under a little bit. Nice. So Carolina, scoop your right butt cheek under and then let your pelvis move forward more and then let your chest move forward more. Yeah. Good. You can absolutely be on blocks here, you guys, if coming down to the floor feels like it creates more restriction than it creates freedom. Good. But deep breaths. Again, there's a benefit to being in a position where a joint or where a part of your body is in that kind of squeezed place. So that front hip, front thigh, front groin in a bit of a squeezed place. Beautiful. Take one more breath. Nice, and then walk your hands back up, please. Good, plant the hands, lift the back knee, take your right leg up and back to down dog split. You got it, bend the knee, kick your heel and keep your knee pointing straight down towards the floor. So level your pelvis, that right hip is gonna drop in space. You have to lift through your left side and then squeeze that heel towards your butt and then press that heel up towards the ceiling, lift the thigh a little higher. 
and then drag back on your hands just a little bit, lift your chest forward towards your hands. So Joanne, keep your knee pointing down towards the floor. There you go. So you're doing more of the back bend. Lift from the back of your heart. Keep your chin nice and neutral, you guys. Back of your throat and your back of your heart lifts. That's what I'm interested in. Good. And then extend back to straight. Drop the head straight in that right leg. Good. And then drop the right foot down to the floor. Downward facing dog. Slide forward to plank pose. Good. Knees to the floor. Butt stays lifted. Slide your armpits forward a little further and then drop your chest to the floor between your thumbs, but keep your butt up to the sky. Lift your chin. Good. So you're squeezing your knees and your hands towards each other. You're like a little inchworm, knees, chest, and chin, Kristen. Good. Feet on the floor, Carolina. There you go. And then pull forward through the arms, stretch the legs to straight, point your toes, take your arms back behind you, interlace your fingers. I know you wanted to come straight into Cobra. Good. Come into Cobra this way. Press your feet down to the floor. Lift your armpits. Lift head, neck, and chest. Drop your chin neutral to the floor or neutral towards your chest. Pull the back of the throat back. Good. Nice, you guys. And then release forehead to the floor, please. Good job. Good. Plant your forearms on the floor. Press up into Sphinx pose. I know, not at all what you're used to. <laughs> Pressing into your forearms, drag back. Good, scoop into the low space of your belly and then lift your chest up, up, up. Like the back of your heart is gonna slide forward between your upper arms. Nice, and then again, that long throat dropping the chin slightly, pulling back through the ears. Good. Nice, preparations for holidays, right? Paying attention in a way that you don't normally do getting out of your habits. Good. Look towards your belly button, please. Round into your low rib cage, tuck your toes. And then you can press into your knees here first. So you pop your butt back up and connect your ribs to the front of your pelvis. So do that, take your knees to the floor, pop your butt back up, keep your armpits over your elbows, squeeze your low ribs in. So you're almost like you're rounding your back. Then from there, press into your feet, send your inner thighs to the sky, come into forearm plank. Good, and then you can, if you've come a little too far, a little too high, you can bring the armpits forward again. You can lift your upper chest. Good, but still that neutral throat. Awesome, you guys. Nice job. And then drop the knees to the floor, please. Come up onto your hands, hands and knees. Very good, cat cow, couple of breaths. Inhaling as you lengthen, exhale as you curl in. Good. Again, will you get benefit if your breath is just happening one way and your body's going another way? Sure. Do you get a sense of real cohesiveness with yourself if your breath and your body are moving together? Absolutely. Starts to take that feeling of scattered away from your mind. So that's the point, right? So we can move any way that we want. We can breathe any way that we want, but if we're not doing them together in some way, we may not be getting the effect of less scattered. Good, come back to stillness, please. Neutral spine, spread your fingers wide, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Beautiful, left foot steps forward between the hands. Inhale, both arms to the sky, high lunge. Good, reach back behind you, interlace your fingers at the low spine, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. So as your shoulders lift up, your armpits lift up. Do not push your ribs forward when you do that. Hug your upper arms towards each other. Start to lengthen your arms as you continue to draw your ribs in and lengthen through the top of your head, pull up, good. Nice, you guys. So just that feeling of a straight, long reach through your spine, it's huge. Then bow forward just halfway, come parallel to the floor. So your butt's gonna lift up and back slightly. Good, but as soon as you start to feel like your head is dropping because your shoulders just can't stay lifted anymore, pause. Draw your hands towards your low back a little more. Lift your arm bones higher. Lift your chest higher. Push back through your hips. Nice. And then stay there, stretch your arms out wide, letter T, airplane arms. Good, forward a little more, mark straight in line with your shoulders. Good, and then right hand touches down, please. Left arm to the sky, spinal twist. Don't fall onto that hand. 
Good, touch down and then lift long through your chest. So use the right hand to pull longer through your left shoulder. Awesome. And then release that hand down to the floor. Both hands inside the front foot, drop the back knee, walk to the upper right hand corner of your mat. Come on down to your forearms if you'd like or stay on fingertips or blocks. Good. You're letting your shoulders come in line with your hips or lower. That is the idea. Good. And there's still that feeling that you are scooping that left sit bone, your left butt cheek under. Maybe that means you have to change what you're doing with your upper body, but that's what we learn to do. It's to get out of the mindset that there is a position that is going to give me what I'm looking for. That it's an automatic response that my effort is what's going to get me what I want. Yes, effort is involved. But what you're able to receive when you are in a state of openness is often beyond our expectations, beyond what we thought we wanted, beyond what we thought we needed. So there's the effort and then there's the moment where you let go of the results, where you let go of what you're actually going to receive or what it's going to feel like. Good. Last breath, drop yourself a little bit deeper, a little bit wider. Nice. And then walk yourself back in, please. Plant your hands, lift the back knee, and then take your left leg up and back to down dog split. Good. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt. Knee continues to point down. So bring that left hip a little wider in space. It's gonna drop in space, which is fine because your right hip is gonna lift up in response. And then you're squeezing that heel in, flex your foot hard, and then start to press that heel up towards the ceiling without letting your left hip fly open. Good. And then squeeze back on your hands, pull your arms up into the shoulder socket and start to lift your chest forward. Back of your heart lifts up. I don't care how far your head comes up. Keep your chin neutral. So dropping a little bit more towards your chest, pull up through the back of your throat and really work the space be behind your heart, between the shoulder blades. Good, really nice, Alice. Beautiful, you guys, nice, Kristen. Relax the head, please. Stretch that left leg out to straight. Good, and then release that foot down to the floor. Downward facing dog. Slide forward to plank pose. Good, knees to the floor, please. Shift your armpits forward a little further and then drop your chest between your thumbs. You're coming into knees, chest, and chin, but your chest should be between your hands. So if you're too far back from that, it's not gonna feel like a useful position. Toes are on the floor, knees are on the floor, butt is up. So you gotta squeeze your knees towards your hands. That's it. And even here, you're trying to rotate those arm bones forward and up. So you're widening the chest, like you're trying to come into Cobra, but your butt's in the air. Good. And then pull all the way forward onto your belly, point your toes, rise up into Cobra. Go ahead this time, use the hands. Good, drop your chin towards your chest just a little bit and then pull back through the back of your throat. Feel your collarbones rising up. The back of your heart is moving forward between your arms. Nice, Lauren. And then release, please. Good, back to your belly. Come up to Sphinx pose. So coming onto your forearms, pressing down and dragging back. Good, and pressing into the tops of your feet, lifting through the front edge of your pelvis, back of your heart moves forward, long throat, drop the chin slightly, pull back. Good. The entire physical practice of yoga is preparation. Preparation for what? We have no idea. <laughs> We call it meditation, but we don't know what it means until we're in it, right? We call it peace, but we don't know what it means until it's what's happening. We call it enlightenment. We have no idea what it means until we suddenly just don't feel like we're at odds with the world. So can you recognize the moment where you let go of the effort of trying to make things feel the way you think it should feel? Good. Drop your chin towards your chest, curl into the back of your rib cage, 
Good, engage those low belly muscles, tuck your toes, and then press into your knees. So lift the hips first, bring the hips up in line with the shoulders and pull that low rib cage in so you get that core connection. Armpits still pull forward over your elbows though. So Kristen, bring your elbows forward more. That's it. And then maintain that, press into your feet, send your inner thighs straight to the sky. Good, because you forgot that coming up into a plank position or holding a plank position means you have to work through your thighs. It's not just about your back. Good, start to walk your feet forward towards your elbows any amount. Take your butt nice and high, dolphin pose or forearm dog. Good, keep your head neutral with your spine. So don't look forward. Yeah, just find the place where you are continuing to lift your hips nice and high. Keep pressing into your forearms. Good, feet walk forward a little more up on your tippy toes. If you're super comfortable where you are, take one leg to the sky. Nice, and then release that leg down. Take the other leg up. Good, and then release that leg down. Nicely done, walk your feet back just a little bit. Drop your knees to the floor. Good, press back child's pose. Nice, the shoulders are a little cranky from that or anything else. Take your arms a little wider or even reach your hands back to hold your ankles or your feet. Good. Options. Right. You start looking at some of the, you know, ritual suggestions for any of the yoga, yogic or Hindu, because most of them are just coming from the Hindu tradition uh, for the Hindu holidays. And sometimes it gets so specific and in almost a ridiculous way. And of course, as Westerners, we don't have half the things that, you know, an Indian household would have in their house. So what do you do? Right. Does it mean you can't celebrate? Heck no, that's not what it means. It means that you find the meaningful alternative. It's a life skill, finding meaningful alternatives. So it's again, that moment where you let go of the, fa of the feeling that my effort has to be one way in order to get the result that I want. Good, walk yourself back up, please. Bring your hands to your hips, come up to a high kneeling position. So hands to your hips. You can take a block here and place it between the upper thighs if you'd like. We're coming into camel. If you need something underneath your knees for cushioning, feel free to have that. Good. So the block between the upper thighs gives you an awareness of rolling your thighs inward, even feeling like those hip points the, at the sides of your pelvis are rolling inwards just a little bit. Good. So it helps your low back already feel like it's pulling wide. Nice. Take your hands back behind your head, please. Elbows wide, press the head straight back into the hand. So a neutral chin, but press straight back and then squeeze your elbows slightly forward. Nice, draw your low rib cage in. Start to hinge backwards, please. So from your thighs to your ribs, to your chest, whole one line, lean back. Good, yep. So your butt has to almost come back towards your heels, lean back. Nice, and then at the last moment there, lift your chest to the sky and drop your head back. What? Nice, and then navel to spine, come all the way up. So it's like a little baby camp, camel. Good, you're gonna do the same thing second time with the hands behind your head. And the third time I'm gonna let you do it however you want. So hands behind your head. Good, again, pressing the head back, squeezing the elbows slightly forward. Keep that hinge, one straight line, front of your body, hinge back. So I want your thighs to feel like they have to really extend and press down. And at the last second, when you hinge as far as you can, then lift your heart to the sky, drop your head back into your hands, feel your armpits and your shoulder blades cradle the back of your heart. And then navel to spine, press down through your legs, come all the way up. Good. So third camel pose, you can do the arms however you would like. You can keep them at the low back. You can keep them behind your head. Good. And as you come back, if you're keeping your hands behind your head, when you get to that point where you start to go into the actual back bend, the chest opening, feel free to drop your hands down to your heels if you'd like. So third camel pose, however you're starting, you're starting with the same body awareness. Hinge back, please. And then as you hinge, as you come as far back as you can, then take your heart to the sky. Drop your head back, but don't lose your neck. And then let your hands drape down to find your heels or blocks. Good, or maybe keep your hands right where they are. Keep pressing down into your legs, lifting long through the upper chest and throat, navel in. In your biggest back bend, your navel has to be engaged. Good, press into your legs, come all the way back up. 
Nice job. Untuck your toes, remove the block, sit back onto your heels and bring your forehead towards the floor. Good. I don't know if I'm fixing Carolina's back or breaking it more. <laughs> she just made a sound. Good. Bring your hands back behind you. Interlace your fingers at the low spine. Good. You're going to start to roll up onto the crown of your head, please. As you roll round into your back, lift your hips, stretch those arms up and over any amount. Good. So not a ton of weight on the top of your head. Just rounding. Good. And then release the hips back to your heels, please. Release the hands. Nice, this time you're gonna do the same thing one more time. Just hold your ankles or have your hands alongside your shins if holding the ankles doesn't work. And forehead to the floor. And you're gonna roll up onto the crown of the head, round into your back. Good, let the shoulders hang here. Let the shoulders round with the rest of your spine. And again, not a lot of weight on your head. You're still holding it through the abdominals. Good, and then release the hips back to your heels. Nice. Good, you guys. And then walk yourself back up, please. Come back to hands and knees. And come into downward facing dog. Good. Right leg comes up and back, down dog split. Beautiful, bring that foot forward between the hands, lunge. <laughs> careful of puppies. Drop the back knee. Use a blanket there if you need. Inhale the arms up to the sky on Janayasana. Good. Squeezing the front heel and the back knee towards each other. Nice. Bring your hands to heart center. <laughs> Prayer twist. Left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Good. Pressing the knee wide into the hand. And then scooping your belly, send your left armpit down and forward. So don't be afraid of that. If you don't let yourself rotate that left side of your body, your right side is not going anywhere. So bring that left shoulder forward and then start to fall back into the right shoulder. That's it. Nice, Susan. Nice, Emily. Good, Harriet. Beautiful, Lauren. Nice, Mark. Come back to center, please. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Good job. And then release the hands down to the floor, please. Beautiful, lift your back knee. Good, just for a moment, lift your hips nice and high, straight in your front thigh, keep your back heel lifted. Good, scoop your belly, push your hips high to the sky. That's it. And then bend that front knee again, but keep that feeling of lift through your back thigh so it doesn't collapse, it stays in that energy of pulling back. And then inhale the arms to the sky, high lunge. Nice. Beautiful, take your torso forward parallel to the floor, step up to warrior three. So to left thigh comes up. Good, again, torso parallels the floor. So if you don't bring your ribs forward enough, there's no way your hips are gonna lift. There's no way your thigh's gonna lift. Good, nicely done. And then hands to heart center, please. Start to bow forward towards that standing leg, deeper and deeper and deeper. Keep kicking that thigh up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And then there's the moment where your hands just fall to the floor, standing split. Good. But it's a dropping softly down onto the floor and not a collapsing, we hope. <laughs> Good. Nice, you guys. And then step that left foot alongside the right, standing forward fold. Nicely done. Separate your feet nice and wide on your mat. Turn your legs feet wide, sorry. Bend your knees, come into squat. Good. Nice, feel the baby toes of your feet. Good. Squeeze your knees in towards your elbows. I want you to feel, I'm not gonna ask you to do it, but I want you to feel as though you are preparing for how you are going to come up on the balls of your feet in squat. So again, I'm not asking you to do it. I just want you to feel that you are lifting your weight up out of your feet at the same time that you are still rooted to the floor. Good, I know some of you are up on the balls of your feet anyway, even though I said you didn't have to do it. <laughs> Good. And then hands to the floor, please. Straighten the legs, turn the toes forward and bow. Beautiful, All right? So that feeling of awareness, the lightness. It always comes with a feeling of lightness. 
but a relaxed lightness, not a crazy out of control lightness. Heel toe your feet a little closer, please. Good. Step back to uh, plank pose, please. Upward push up. Uh -huh. Good. Lower down slow, either just like this or come through knees, chest, chin again, if you like that variation. And find your way down to your belly. Rise up into cobra, lift head, neck, and chest. Good. And then downward facing dog. Again, watching that you're doing that vinyasa or those habitual movements, maybe with more awareness than you usually do. Good. Left leg comes up and back, down dog split. Nice. Step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. Then drop the back knee. Use a blanket if you'd like underneath that knee. Inhale the arms up, Anjaneyasana. Good. Squeezing the front heel towards the back knee. You got it. Nice, you guys. Long, long, long lift. Good. And then did I have you do the prayer twist in, in Anjaneyasana or high lunge? Anjaneyasana. Hands to heart center, please. Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. Right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Prayer twist. Good. Sending that right armpit and shoulder down and forward. Don't be afraid of that. And then you fall back and lift. Again, your greatest preparation is what you are willing to let go of. Then you can find greater opening, different opening, different experience. And palms pressing together, not with desperation, but loving pressure that says by pushing my palms together, it means I can draw my elbows wider. It means I can squeeze into my chest and open my back, open my chest more because I'm pressing my hands together. Good, come back to center, arms to the sky. No death grips in yoga. Good, release the hands to the floor. Lift that back knee up. And again, for a moment with the back knee lifted, just straighten the front thigh. So keep your back heel off of the floor. Just pull your hips super high. Good. It's because I realize we're going from lunge to lunge and the knee wants a little bit of a break. Beautiful. And then keep that lift because that lift and that pulling back of the back thigh is still relevant as you bend the front knee and come back into high lunge. So bend the front knee, take your back thigh even higher and then inhale the arms to the sky. Good. And then take your torso forward parallel to the floor, step up to warrior three, pushing off of that back foot. So don't just put your weight forward and then expect somehow that you're going to deadlift yourself into a parallel position. Push off of the back foot. Don't be afraid of that. Hands at heart center. Right toes face down to the floor. So Lisa S, turn them down. There you go. Good. And then start to bow forward and forward and forward and forward, kicking that thigh higher and higher and higher and higher until at the last moment your hands touch down again, not in desperation, but simply because there's nowhere else to go. So drop the hands. Good. Standing split. Nice. Notice what your upper back is doing. If it's super rounded here, try and lift your chest a little higher and pull those shoulder blades towards each other. Nice. And then release the right foot forward alongside the left, standing forward fold. Beautiful. Good. Separate your feet nice and wide. Turn your toes out again. Drop down to squat. Inhale the arms up to the sky, but keep the legs engaged. Arms up. So you're dropping your tail, dropping your pelvis, let your rib cage float back in space and lift your chest. If you accidentally fall on your butt, bonus points. <laughs> Don't do it on purpose, but if it's an accident, you get bonus points. Good, hands to the floor, please. Nice, straighten your legs, turn your toes forward. Good. If you haven't figured out where we're going next, I don't know if you've met me before. <laughs> Opportunity for crow pose. Right, so you can either come back to a squatting position, a little modified squat. So you're going to be up on your tippy toes in that squat pose. Heels can come closer together if you'd like. You can also do this standing up on a block. So you place your block flat this way and you step your feet up onto the block, big toes together, and come into that same squat position standing on the block. So you can see Carolina's doing it. Good. So just toes on the block, Kristen, not your heels, just your toes on the block. Yeah, balls of your feet. There you go. Yep. So it's like a little frog squat if you're up on the block. Good. And then your hands are coming flat to the floor in front of you. 
Yep, so you're leaning forward. And then you have to lift your butt a little higher, bring your chest forward. So your elbows have to come on top of your wrists. Otherwise, this doesn't work. Round into your back, get broad across your shoulders, scoop into that belly, knees come to your upper arms, as close to your armpits as they'll come, squeeze, and then scoop your belly and push your butt to the sky. It's not about coming all the way forward. It's about pushing your butt to the sky, pushing your ribs to the sky. Keep the back of your throat lifted. If your head goes down, the rest of you is going down. Good. And then if you're super comfortable in crow and you want to transition to headstand, go ahead, start to bring your head to the floor. Keep control. Squeeze in. Press into those hands, legs to the sky. If one of us does it, we all did it. And Alice is in headstand, so we all did it. Nice. And then the big finale, if you're in headstand, bring your knees back in. Curl into your spine, come back into crow. She's got it. Awesome. And then come on down. Awesome work, you guys, everybody. Come to sit. Bottoms of the feet together. Knees wide. Good. Walk yourself forward, please. If you have a block and you want to place it underneath your forehead in Baddha Konasana so you can truly rest for a moment, go for it. Your block can be any height. Maybe you place it on your feet so that your head can rest there. Maybe you place it in front of you so your head can rest there. Good. And if you're like, oh, there's, I need six blocks to do that. <laughs> you can use six blocks or don't worry about it. There's a moment, right? And it's said that you can find that release. Again, you come out of a challenging yoga sequence, yoga posture, and maybe you feel that emptiness happen naturally where your mind is suddenly nowhere. And that feels great. And as soon as you notice it, it's your mind back somewhere again. <laughs> and that's meditation, that moment where your mind was nowhere. So we do this practice as a preparation to receive life in a bigger way to celebrate the life that you have in a bigger way. And for all the things that you are wishing for, again, Navaratri is celebration of the goddess. And so we're inviting that energy in. And by inviting it in, what does it mean to receive courage and fearlessness? What does it mean to receive grace and abundance? What does it mean to receive wisdom beyond, beyond knowledge? How do you do that? We have no idea. So the entire celebration is we prepare in order to receive without expectation of what that receiving is going to be. You can find it in the midst of the moment of your effort, right? Balancing and crow pose. Maybe you have that moment where your mind is nowhere. And then it's when the effort releases. Walk yourself back up. Nicely done. Good, move the blocks to the side, stretch your right leg forward in front of you, left foot to the inside of your right thigh. Yep, so Janu Shirshasana. Left foot to the inside of the right thigh, inhale the arms to the sky, little twist to your right and then bow over that extended leg. Good, letting your left side body, your left hip twist in just a little bit further so that you get real length on your left side. Every day you are practicing yoga, you are preparing yourself to receive the experience that is beyond your regular habitual way of noticing things. Added benefit is your hamstrings, your calves, your back, your shoulders, your body will feel maybe lighter, more flexible. But even that is simply so that you can receive your life more completely, less distraction. Go ahead, walk yourself back up, please. Nice, keep that left knee bent, just pull it wider so that you're at a little bit more of a wide angle with your leg, so your left knee goes a little wider. Good, yeah, so keep the foot against your thigh, Kristen, just move the pelvis into, almost like you're in a half straddle. There you go, you got it. 
Good, you guys. Right hand walks down that right thigh inside the, inside the foot, so towards your inner right heel. Yep. And then turn your ribs open, stretch your left arm over the ear. Good. Second variation of Janashirshasana. Using all the fancy Sanskrit terms for twisting. Good. Keep lengthening, you guys. The important thing here is not how much are you reaching through that left side that maybe is getting overworked, but how are you supporting it by the reach of your right side? If your right side is stuck, your left side can't go any further. Shoulders away from your ears. That little lift of your head as though you're pressing up into your hand again. Good. And then walk yourself back up to center. Please keep the legs exactly as they are. Walk yourself straight forward from your hips. So you're coming into a forward fold as though you're walking straight ahead between your legs. There you go. You got it. Guys, so not reaching for the foot, Lisa, just between the legs. Yep, there you go. <laughs> nice. C's and C, just flex your foot, your right foot. Yes. Good, walk yourself back in you guys, nice job. Beautiful, bring the legs straight out in front of you. So again, getting square with the pelvis, bring them back in. Left leg is going to stay where it is, bend your right knee, bring the bottom of the foot to the inside of the left leg, knee goes wide, inhale the arms up to the sky, little twist to your left and bow over the left leg. Good. Good, feeling where there is meaningful effort in your posture and then the place, the line, the breath, where you can let go of the effort being the thing that you think is going to get you to feel the way you want to feel. All right, so much of this practice is a realization that the way that you want to feel is already available to you. There's just a lot of other things you've put in the way. So there's the effort of putting yourself in the best position and then dropping into receiving. And the way that you want to feel, whatever the name for it that you have is, maybe it simply is different in reality than it is in your head. But you can have it right now. Also a teaching of Lakshmi is that you have it right now. Whatever you're looking for, it's right in front of you. You just haven't noticed. Maybe it's not fully formed yet, but it's right in front of you. Walk yourself back up. Good, so same position, you're just moving your pelvis wider. So you're bringing yourself more towards that half straddle. So the left leg can go wide, the right knee can pull a little wider, but your foot is still to the inside of the left leg or into your groin. Good, left hand walks inside the leg towards your inner left heel. Make sure your left toes are not dropping out to the side. Keep them straight up and down. Turn your right rib cage open, right arm comes over the ear. Good, so now it's more of the extension of the side body, not just the back. And again, remember your reaching is being created by what the left side body is capable of doing. If your left side body is getting stuck, the right side body can't go any further. Keep your hips rooted to the floor. A little lift of your throat so that it's like you're pushing that right side of your head up into your hand. Good, and then reach through your fingers. No crooked elbows, please. There you go. Even if it means your arm is more up to the sky than over your ear, that's okay. Good, Carolina, you got it. Keep breathing. Nice, you guys. Come all the way back up. Good job, hands straight in front of you, forward fold straight between the legs, straight between the pelvis. Again, keeping those right toes awake so they're not falling in, they're not falling out. What are you preparing yourself for? What are you creating a container for, a vessel for? 
Because that's what we do with our habits and that's what we do with our rituals, right? So rituals are just habits that are a little bit more special. We pay more attention to. We do more purposefully. So start to make all of your habits more ritual, pay more attention to what you are doing and why. And you create a vessel to experience something else. And what you experience may not be what is in your mind that is going to be the result. But we practice letting go. Walk yourself back up, please. Good, take both legs out and wide, full straddle. Good, flex your feet. Dig your heels down and pull back so that your knees pop up, but your knees pop up because you are dragging your heels down and back. So don't just bend your knees and <laughs> call it a day. I want you to drag your heels down and back so your knees pop up. Good, so you're getting the full activity of the tops of your thighs, your hips. Good, let it pop up a little higher. Good, so legs a little wider, Mark, wider than your mat. Yep, there you go. And then start to keep your knees lifted, start to walk yourself forward into your forward fold, but keep your knees pulling in. Don't let your feet roll open. Keep your toes rotating slightly inward towards the floor. That's it. Yeah, you got it, Susan. Nice, you guys. Keep your knees popped up. Yep, even more. Exaggerate it. Knees up, knees up, knees up, and walk forward. Good. For some of you who can come pretty far towards the floor here, if you want to thread the arms underneath your raised knees, you can. So arms come out, letter T, left arm underneath the left knee, right arm underneath the right. Good. You got it. And you're still extending the spine as long as you can. Nice. For some of you, again, if you can get the arms under there, even if you can't come very low, you can wrap your arms around your calves and kind of bend your elbows wide and bring yourself a little deeper. So Lisa, I would totally go for that. Lisa S, maybe Lisa B too. I can't see what your knees are. <laughs> so many Lisas. Good, you guys, one more breath. Pull your chest wide towards the floor. That's it. And then slowly come on out. Nice job. Legs all the way to straight, please. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Good, press your butt down. Feel as though you are energetically squeezing your legs towards each other. They're not going to come any closer. You're just squeezing in. So you've got stable base. Dig those heels down. Bow forward. Keep the arms in line with your shoulders. Your shoulders and, oh my God, keep your head in line with your spine, your arms in line with your ears, and reach forward. Good. So you're hinging from the pelvis. Extend, 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 extend. And when you've gone as far as you possibly can, then let the hands touch down to the floor. Ah, nice, Lauren. Good letting go. Yeah, and said in meditation that we, even within meditation, there are different states of awareness. But that falling into it, the state of Kaivalya, spontaneous. Spontaneous falling into unity, spontaneous falling into what we didn't expect, what we didn't know to look for. Good. Walk yourself back up, please. Nice job. Bring the legs towards each other. Come on to your backs. Yeah. Good. My brain, uh, my inner brain timer is still somehow calibrated to hour and a half long classes. So I have to keep checking myself. <laughs> so I make sure I let you go when I'm supposed to. Good. Take the right ankle over the left thigh, please. Good, lift your left shin parallel to the floor, reach through to hold that thigh, flex the feet. Good, I hope you never get tired of this posture. I feel like we do it a lot, it's useful a lot. But especially for the lower back, it's a very nice way to balance things when you've been moving a lot. And a nice way to open things if you haven't been moving a lot. Good. One more breath, squeezing that thigh in. And then go ahead and switch, please. Take the other ankle on top of the other knee. So left ankle on top of right knee. Reaching through to hold. Good. Trying to balance the weight. So a little bit more weight on the right side of your pelvis here. There you go.
Good. And then release that, please. Place your feet down on the floor, both feet. Good, arms alongside you. Good, bend the elbows up into robot arms. So elbows bend, fingers point up towards the ceiling. Set your feet, so you're setting yourself for bridge pose. And again, as you set yourself up, you're dragging your heels towards your butt, dragging your butt towards your heels, lifting from your armpits, start to rise up, lifting the chest. And then navel draws in, and then you contract those glutes, not squeezing them inward, but just contracting each one and lift your hips up. So the beginning of the back bend is happening from the armpits. And the hips, the butt are an extension of that. Nice. Good, you guys. Take your right leg to the sky for a moment. So pressing into that left heel, right leg up. Good. And then place that right foot down to the floor. Please take your left leg up. Nice. Don't waver on that right leg. Good. And then bring that knee down, that foot down to the floor. Nice job, Joanne. Good. And then release your hips all the way down. Nice. Pause for a moment there. Good. So your option for one more back bend of your choice, if you feel that you want to come into a full wheel here, you can place the hands alongside your ears and do that. If you would like to come back into bridge pose again, you can simply do that. If you want to roll over onto your belly, reach back for your ankles to come into upward bow, another option. You could even come up and do camel if you wanted to. So one more back bend of your choice. Again, if you're coming into wheel, you're placing the hands flat to the floor alongside your ears. Good. And pressing down into the hands. Same action as bridge. You're just then hugging through the upper arms and stretching. Back of the heart reaches through the arms. Nice, Lisa B. Good. Lisa S, bring your knees towards each other just a little more, especially that right one. That right one wants to fly open a lot. Good. Nice, Alice. Nice, Joanne. Nice. Good. Heart to the sky. Really good, you guys. Deep breaths. I know, keep holding. All right, this is also what we do. We get into a pose and we say, oh, okay, that was enough. How long can you sustain a meaningful experience where your breath is long and deep and you don't feel that you are going beyond the usefulness of your effort? You find that point and you say, this was enough. Then go ahead and let yourself gently come back down to the ground, back down to the floor. Let the pose go. Good. And then pause again, knees bent, the spine settle. This is the thing is that we are looking always for where the realistic boundaries are within ourselves. Where's the meaningfulness of our effort and when are we pushing for no reason, pushing beyond reason? And where is there maybe the moment where we're ready to give up because we have no idea what we're waiting for. We have no idea what being full feels like, what being fulfilled feels like. We have no idea. So you wait for maybe one more breath and say, does it feel like I'm ready to release because release is what I need? Or am I releasing just because I'm bored? or I think I should. Use every breath, every posture to its fullest extent. Appreciate your effort and then willingly let it go. Bring the bottoms of your feet together, please. Let your knees drop wide, Baddha Konasana. Good. Arms can stay alongside you. They can go wide out into cactus arms if you'd like. You can bring your hands to your belly. You can bring your hands to your chest, whatever you'd like to do with the arms. Good. If you have blocks and you want to place them underneath your knees or your thighs to make it a little bit more of a restorative position, you're welcome to do that. But breathe yourself wide open.
physical practice of yoga is a practice of preparation. You're preparing yourself for something that you have no concept of what it will be. So all of the effort is simply in creating a container, a vessel, and an awareness so that you are able to perceive something beyond your own habits, beyond your own concept of where your limits are, where you begin and where you end. So we start with those basic things like let go of earlier today, let go of tomorrow. We practice over and over again, that feeling of clench and release so that we get skillful at releasing. In the releasing, we become open to receive something else. So in your own life, in your own self, what are you preparing for? What have you been maybe trying to prepare for your entire life and it's just been effort, 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 it's not quite there. Everything I do, I don't quite get it. It's not here yet, I have to keep trying harder. What are you preparing for? And at what points do you let yourself really drop open to receive the benefits of your effort, whatever they may be? Bring your knees back in towards each other. Good. Bring the knees in towards the chest. Nice, cross your right thigh over top of your left, stacking the knees, separate the feet, reach for your ankles or your shins. Keep your feet awake, flexed feet. Keep your low back on the ground. Good. And then release and switch, go the other way, put the other leg on top. And then releasing, hugging the knees in towards the chest. Pull the right knee and extend your left leg down to the floor. Good, come into spinal twist. We're bringing the right knee across your body. Good, right arm extends wide. And then optional here is to bend your left knee, that's the leg extended out towards the bottom of your mat. Curl that heel in towards your butt and reach with the right hand for the foot or the ankle, taking the quad stretch. Good. You can also, if you want to, straighten the right leg all the way out to straight. So you're in a straight-legged twist with or without the quad stretch. Good. And you're breathing into all the space that is created by this unique shape. You never would have caught yourself breathing into before. And slowly unwind it, please, releasing the foot, drawing that right knee back in. Good, squeeze it in towards your chest. And then extend the right leg down to the floor, please. Good, bring the left knee in. Come into the spinal twist, going the other direction, cross your body. And again, this might be it. If this is just where it feels good to be, then just hang out with the twist. Don't do anything else. But if you would like to, so Mark, you're letting that left knee come all the way over and then the leg that is straight down towards the floor bends to bring your heel in. So it's not the top leg, it's the bottom leg that you're reaching for the heel. Good, so if you'd like you guys, your right leg that is extended, you can bend the knee, take your heel towards your butt, left hand reaches for foot or the ankle. Again, optional is to straighten the left leg out as well. So Joanne, switch it. So you're bringing that left knee forward. Yep, down towards the floor. 
Nope. Yeah, top knee goes towards the floor. Stretch your right leg back out to, down towards the floor. Yep, keep your left knee where it is. Good, and then bend your right knee again like you're kicking your heel to your butt and reach with the left hand. There you go, yep, perfect. You got it. <laughs> and then you're relaxing that shoulder back down towards the floor as much as you can. Nice, you guys. Again, even in a position like this, where if you're holding your foot and you've got your other leg extended and you're all twisted up, if you relax your effort here, this is also a place of freedom. There's a lot to receive here. So you set yourself up well, and then you have to let go of what you expected it to feel like, what you wanted it to feel like, receive what it actually does feel like and then recognize where there is release where there's freedom where there's whatever there is in the experience recognize it good and then slowly release releasing the foot bringing the left knee back in towards the chest good squeeze your right knee in with it let's do a nice little massage with your knees for the lower back so circling the knees in one direction and then circling them in the other direction good and then squeezing the knees straight and bring your forehead up to meet your knees hug good and then release the shoulders please stretch your legs out in front of you let the feet drop open turn your palms to face up Make a bed for your dogs and your cats. Shavasana. The ultimate place of letting go. If the mind is still running here and there, just practice that exhaling.
Very gently bring the awareness back to your breath. Letting the body begin to stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. As you're ready, bring the knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. Taking a moment before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. Hands coming to rest palm to palm at the heart or whatever mudra has been serving you well. Suggested that in our spiritual practice, we should always be curious. And I think they say that so that we're in a state where we're willing to be surprised. Because whatever we say that we're looking for and whatever effort we put into preparing for what we say we're looking for, we have no idea what it feels like in the actual. So the suggestion is to stay curious because when it happens, it will happen spontaneously, not as a direct result of your effort, but still because you prepared yourself to receive it. But you won't know what it really feels like until it's there. So your best preparation is to stay curious, become empty, practice letting go so that as it happens, when it happens, you can be surprised. Spontaneously, you can be surprised that what you've been seeking is right there in front of you and has been all along. That's our practice. So this is the preparation before you go and dive in to celebrate any one thing, before you dive into the effort of I'm trying to get here, wherever here is. What are you preparing for? And can you start with just practicing letting go so that you have a concept of what it is to receive? And whatever it is that you want, stay curious, be surprised that it is beyond your expectations has to be. We'll close the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste, everybody. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your night, a great rest of your week until I see you again. Again, Navaratri is coming up. We're going to have some fun stuff associated with that also being offered. So keep your eyes open. Um, and we will see you soon. If you need to say anything to me, you have to unmute yourselves. But we do have to scoot off in a minute because Jeannie is coming on for her class.